ipmnation.com. Hello, everybody. Oh, thanks, Eric. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's Matt Connerton, Unleashed in the Afternoon. We are live. On WMNH 95.3 FM, emanating from a very spring-like downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, streaming at WMNHradio.org. Of course, we're on Comcast 97 here in Manchester as well, and on Facebook via Facebook Live on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. Uh, I took a big risk today, my friends, because I am a risk taker. I left to come and do the show with no jacket, no coat, no hoodie of any kind. I realize it might be freezing by the time I leave here, but I said, damn it, it's spring. And I realize it's not actually spring yet. John Hopwood is here uh, as well. Hello. Hi, Matt. Hi. Hi. And uh, Easy G is in the house. He, he got up and went over there, but, uh, but he is in the house, as I think the young people say. <laughs> And uh, so this can only mean one thing. Obviously, uh, Eric Gagnon uh, finally taking me up on my offer to become the entertainment reporter for Matt Connerton Unleashed. I did tell him, whatever Peter White's paying him, I'll double it and add a zero. And the day has finally come. And it is March 12th, 2019. I do have six zero three two five zero six zero zero seven is the number to call. Eric, please, if 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 you're going to be the entertainment reporter, the official entertainment reporter for Matt Connerton Unleashed, you got you got to let me finish the intro. We have some folks in the uh, Facebook <laughs> live chat, by the way. Hi, Matt. Uh, let's see. Hi, I, I said hello to you already. You're acting like I ignored you or something. What does that say? How dare you? Uh, Let's see. Uh, it's in there at the news desk, uh, being all newsy. I uh, see Jenny in the Facebook live chat. Uh, J- hi. Uh, J- hi, Jenny. Judy Birchfield. Uh, hi, Judy in Dallas. And uh, Marty Stanley from Houston, Texas. Paul. So uh, Say hi to your Uncle Paul. Texas representing on, uh, on the show today, uh, which reminds me, uh, tomorrow on the program, we'll be joined via phone by uh, Dr. Red Lawhorn. Or La Hearn, rather. I don't, I don't know why I always want to say horn. I, I think I'm thinking of uh, steers in Texas, you know, or bulls or whatever with the horns. Uh, he'll be joining us tomorrow on the show. Uh, the last time he was on, it was the most Facebook live chat activity I've ever seen on the show. It was very, very busy. So, so that will be uh, tomorrow afternoon. Is that when you were afflicted with that bad case of tumescence? What's that? Tumescence? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? So, uh, very exciting. Nice and, uh, isn't it a beautiful day? You wore a jacket, didn't you? Yes, and a, uh, a hoodie, I guess, type of device without a hood. I decided, no, I'm not wearing one. I, I mean, I may have worn one earlier, but I said, no, I'm a, I'm a gambler. I'm rolling the dice. I'm taking a risk. I'm going double or nothing. I don't even know what that means in this context. Did you just forget? No. Oh. What is that device uh, there with you? What What is that? What's going on over there? What is that thing? What is that? What was that? What was that thing? You have a, you have a thing. I, uh, thang, thang. You're going you're gonna to alarm Eric. He's going to think you're spying on us. I think it's some kind of... Uh, he's spying uh, on us, isn't he? kind of microphone. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it is, too. I think it's a micro... You know what he's doing? Yeah, you know what he's doing? He's listening to everything we're saying right now. That's what he's yeah, well, doing. Say the government does that. Too. Yeah, the government probably does that as well. I, I, don't, I, I, I feel very uh, very concerned about this. What? And there's uh, Len R.J. Willett, the people's mayor, out in the hallway. He never comes on the show anymore. He's too good for us now. Everybody. Well, no, we don't need to just be waving everyone in randomly. That's uh, that's more of a... Uh, a Species. A, a, yeah, well, you know, I mean, just... Uh, they were know, Yeti. We got to maintain uh, some, con- some control around here. That Which, like the Peter White's morning show where everybody's allowed in. Right. This er- is uh, an exclusive club. That's why I set up that velvet rope. Eric, yeah. uh, you know, you play uh, word games on the morning show. What yeah. is the pr- plural of Yetis with two T? Oh, you better get this right, two Eric. Two T's, not 
One uh, T. You, one T Yeti. I have no idea. The you're you're gonna Yetis. wanna you're gonna wanna get this right, or you are totally fired from your brand new gig oh, as the entertainment reporter on Matt Connerton Unleashed. Oh, I never said and, I was doing this. And you can report you can go crawling back to Peter White, but I don't think he'll take you back. I don't I, think he'll I, take you back. I never said I was an entertainment report on this show. I just drop in once in a while. You know, I used to be Peter White's intern on the morning show, and I was fired for <laughs> gross misconduct. And I've gone back many times. I've said, Peter, won't you please take me back? I mean, I was your intern, and 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 you know, uh, take pity on me. And he was like, No, Matt, I just don't think that uh, I, your behavior on the show uh, and and even before and after the show was uncouth. Well, he's a and, lunatic uh, to you, uh, you know the. Uh... My dander and, Yeti. And, and my dander, you can say it. Yeti. That's where that expression comes from, getting your dander up. Did you know that, Eric? Yeah. Yeah. Two T Yeti. They're just Yeti, even in the plural. Right. Well, now you're giving him the answers. You didn't give him a chance to answer. Well, one T, like the the Yeti, what is it called? The Homo Correctus Americanus. The American Yeti is just one T. Hello to to Stefan Philbrook, who joins us in the Facebook live chat. What are you talking about? They're huskier and heavier from mating with, what was that, the polar wolf? Uh, that's uh, We never mated with polar wolves. That is a vicious lie. I don't care what the History Channel says. How dare you spread this propaganda? Well, I forgot to say this earlier on the uh, morning show. Oh, so you're just going to recycle it here. What, no, very, I forgot to say you, it. Oh, oh, I'm Ooh, sorry, Eric. I want to give a, a uh, shout-out. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Hang on. Easy G with a shout-out. <laughs> to uh, a kid. I think he's around 9 or 10. He's, he's... going to be doing the uh, Peter Pan tonight and tomorrow over at the Palace Theater, and you get your tickets there at the theater. Very is exciting. A, uh, is he and the drag a, uh, queen that's like lit no, up the entire No, he's Peter internet? Pan. No, he's, sorry, he's not Peter Pan. He's going to be uh, Mary Poppins. Oh, wow. He's but really good. He's played he the lead has before. Peter Pan syndrome. Right. right, yes. Well, that's a terrible affliction, Eric. Uh, Are you talking about Ricky Garbage from Peanutville? I do think it's wonderful that you're bringing awareness to this. Because Ricky, no, you know, I'm talking about Peter Mary Poppins Pan. Jr. If you believe it, it will happen. Mary Poppins oh. Jr.? That's what they say when Mary Poppins says that. Oh, oh man. if you believe it, it will happen. Where, yeah. where are those Baptist preachers when you need them about the Armageddon that's the, coming? That's right. the uh, tagline from Mary Poppins. I don't want to believe in Armageddon. So if you believe in Armageddon, it'll happen. That's terrible. What a terrible message. Well, you know, Ricky it, uh, did wish he was a nine-year-old. And under the current, uh, you know, where we classify everything, whatever you want to be, you can be. Oh, that's nice. That's actually a great message. I'm about six foot nine today. Yeah, excellent. I noticed. Hello to uh, Stefan philbrook who says holy cow all-star crew there shout out to hoppy for visiting my facebook page and taking the trash out uh what what is this all about what it's about gun control but you know what happened tell us share share with the group it, it was just uh, about gun control you know how i believe that the uh, extremists when it comes to the second amendment right are what uh kitty pornographers are to the first i understand your position you just can't wait for the un to send in the black helicopters and confiscate all our guns i'm sure erica uh, do you agree with that uh send in the un and caught <laughs> but you see i'm different uh, i kept oh. i cross when they cross the line, i have a firm they call it a bright line mm-hmm if they confiscate one uh, one album or CD or tape of Kiss's Love Gun, I, 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 I'll revolt. Well, good, as oh, yeah. we should all revolt. Christine. Or is That's it a, uh, Christ Camp Teen? That, Which is nah, going to make its debut tonight. We'll tell us more. Ooh. You have to watch uh, Ward 13 tonight. It's Ward seven. 13 with John Hopwood. A medley of the greatest hits of Ricky Garbage. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Eric, are you a fan of Ricky Garbage? He's, no, uh, I never heard the, of him. The soulful sounds of Ricky Garbage. Well, he is an early 90s type of, you know, yeah. has-been. But, never, uh, never heard of him. They're reissuing his oeuvre. Oh, very nice. What kind of music does he play? That sounds French. It's kind of disco-y. Or yeah, pop, uh, sure. Poppy. Kind of disco-y, kind of poppy. Like yeah. John Travolta? He was influenced by Menudo, mm. oh, if you boy. remember Menudo, which isn't that a type of food stuff? Well, Menudo, they just uh, kind of regenerate with new people. Well, I, I thought they were, the wall keeps I, Menudo I like from what the, what, they, what the hell's going on in Venezuela now? They they have no water, that, and people are drinking like sewer water. But and they have the biggest oil reserves in the world. What's going on over there? And man? they love Menudo. 
What's going on with Venezuela? Well, I hope they have menudo. I do. I do too. They're gonna need. They're gonna need to eat menudo what soon. The they're gonna run out of food. Needs they already now. ran out of food. Now they run out of water. Yes. Menudo, What's going sweet on over menudo. there? And our government is pulling out uh, uh, everybody out of the uh, American embassy there, including our our like a blackout over there. The whole, the whole country's is. Fit. And then we're gonna bomb them. I think Trump's gonna nuke them to take control. No, I no, hope not. You now. can't. You don't no. have the oil reserves. <laughs> that's right. That's true. You can true. use conventional arms, but that's it's really true. It's, it's, it's like it's really bad over there right now. It is. Yeah, the place is coming apart, Eric. Now that's but that's what happens with that's the kind of socialism. Communism. Oh yeah. Communism and all that. Look at Cuba. It's been falling apart for uh, as long as I've been alive. Oh, well, yeah. Although those pictures of Obama there were quite nice. I think he wore a tan suit Where he when was he was in Cuba. The 58 Chevy. Yeah, those were some cool pictures. And uh having menudo have we ever had a cooler president? The, the guy was just cool. Whether you agree with him on everything or not, the to guy be was truthful, just cool. That's probably true. Oh, John F. Kennedy. I only remember Oh, that's him as true. A boy. That's true. I, I don't think George W. Bush could have pulled off a tan and suit. Isn't it great that people don't say stuff like, oh, he's the black JFK? That, that, that's, that's so 70s. Though. Right. I've never yes. heard that before. They used yes. to say Spike Lee was the black Woody Allen. <laughs> really, I'd never, that was the 80s. I'd never heard that. Well, yeah, that was the 80s. Oh, you were up in Canada, you know. Uh, Rubbing your furry coat against a uh, pine tree. That is a vicious lie. Uh, Stephen sniffing around the polar wolves. Stephen, no. <laughs> Stephen <laughs> Philbrook says lots of crickets after his visit, referring to your visit to the uh, Facebook page. You, apparently, you must have said something that just uh, shut it down, as I think the young people say. Is that what the young people say, Eric? I mean, uh, I figured you'd know uh, you hang uh, around with the Peter Pan, Mary Poppins kid. I'm not the... Uh, you do? I'm not. Oh. Uh, and I'm, he says he doesn't I, know Ricky. I know <laughs> who he is, but I'm not, I don't hang out with him. He's only like nine or ten years old. Oh, right, right. Okay. Well, nine or ten years old. I just know old. who he is, you know? Oh, right, and, yes. And, you know, he got to put that on when, you know, you can re- say whatever you want. No, I just know he's, he's a talented kid. 50. He's been the lead before in the, in the theater. He's, just, he's oh. just a theater a, a theater kid. Oh, oh, a theater kid. Oh. He, he's oh, really yeah. good at what he does. Is that what we say now? Back when he was going through BC, remember? We had the stuff about him when he was the female impersonator. That was about... What was that, the 80s? Well, it must have been. It certainly wasn't recent because now it's, there is no such thing as gender. That's right. He was nine years old at heart. Right, yes. Not everybody can pull it off, you know. Pull what oh, off, Eric? Oh, oh, oh. We don't oh. like sexual no, <laughs> no. Meaning that's he, for That's for Matt Connerton on Out in the you Sheets. Can, you can pull off a good scene at the theater. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, the, these, these entertainment people, they're so... Uh, uh, what do you say? Licentious. Well, you can see why I worked so hard to get him, right? Why I hired him. Because and why he, Peter gets upset. That's you know, right. I, double he's, I, I wonder if Peter's listening. What a way to find out that I poached his entertainment reporter. I didn't, never said that. You said it. Well, Don't I put mean, words in my mouth. Well, I, I mean, well, that you, okay, you never said the word poached. Uh, I will acknowledge now that, I, yes. Now, I know Peter's not a big wrestling fan. I know you guys are. So you are excited now that we are on the road to WrestleMania. The road to WrestleMania. Oh, we just uh, just a little. Uh, cause I gotta, what time is it? I have to leave. It is 421. Yeah. Oh, oh in about five minutes I have to leave. Oh. Not before saying that, Peter, the great one. Yes. The magnana- magnanimity of his heart. R. Kelly, you know, failed to replace Joel. Yes. And he's going to give him a shot to replace Eric next on Monday. Oh, very nice. The entertainment report. Very nice. And cool. we do have a call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hi, Matt. It's Scumpy. Jeff oh, Scumpy hey, Lorenz. How Scumpy. are you, sir? What's happening, brother? I, you know... I actually heard, I'm um, actually on my way down to uh, rehearsal. I was going to stop in, but I don't think I'll have time. But anyway, oh. um, I hear Eric uh, Easy G's on there. How did his first day at work go? Easy G. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to get into that. I'm wearing my cream lace shirt right now. It went very well. Wow, my boss, uh, she likes to re- uh, refer to my nickname as, uh, I call it boss or I oh, call it Q. Q? She oh, my that, God. She likes having a nickname called Q. Hey, there's that thing again. It went very well. So they're calling you nice. Q? Or I could just call the boss. You know, she, she refers to both names. Yeah. Mm. But it went very well. She's really nice. She's been there 35 well, I'm years. Glad there. I'm glad it did. She's the did. owner there, so she's been there a long time. See, I misunderstood, Scumpy, when you said first day on the job. I thought you were referring to Eric's first day as the new entertainment reporter on Matt Connerton no, Unleashed. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, is that true, too? No, it's oh, not. My Wrestling God. is entertainment. Oh, no, it's boy. not that. Matt's just putting words Wait in my I mouth. Wait till I Peter tomorrow. Oh, my God. He's going to be very... <laughs> no, 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 no. He's no, going to no. be upset. I'm always trying to poach his talent. I hope you I know. You're always trying to steal Easy G away from the morning. Yes. You know, you know. 
I hope you don't be, have, bring R. Kelly in here. No, Did well, we, R, that didn't go well with R. Kelly. Did you hear R. He's, Kelly? He's he freaked out. Yeah, and he's going to jail. But he freaked out in, in here. Uh, he should go to jail. Yes. What, the Valley Street Jail? Nope, so we have to pay yeah. for it? Yeah. Oh, hello well, to... I didn't uh, hear it. And I'm, oh. I'm sorry, and how are you, Hoppy? I am hanging in there, Scumpy. Tonight on uh, the uh, Ward 13 at 7, we're going to uh, debut, well, you know, the reissue of some of the uh, greatest hits of Ricky Garbage. Oh, that's very nice. Scumpy, have you ever shared the stage with Ricky Garbage? I, uh, not yet, anyway. I don't, I don't know. know. Well, there's, I? there's, oh, there's still time. There's oh, still boy. time. And then Eric, should, and then I, should I, he share the stage with me? Well, that's wow, good. He's got a big that's, ego. that's true. Yes. And then he can be in, in Eric's entertainment report. Ricky Garbage oh, could be the, uh, musician of the week or whatever. Very exciting. He's there playing, you go. Ma- he's mm. playing Mary yeah, Poppins. Yeah, very exciting. Very yes, exciting. yes. I'm not playing Mary Poppins. Jack is. I thought it was Ricky. I know. Oh. Well, we well it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's all good. I, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure UCG had a good first day, and uh, yes, you know, I'll oh, be stopping you. in for some fried clams. You got to, you know. Oh yeah, I saw someone else today. I guess it's shrimp ready earlier. Oh boy. Oh boy. I don't like oh, seafood. Oh boy, yeah. I, I, I'm not shrimp a seafood or guy. Shrimp. It, it, no, it's, it's, shrimp is the plural of shrimp, right? Like, I don't know yet. Yes. Mm, yeah, yes. I like shrimp. And it's one of, those like things, it's one of those other things, oxymorons, they call it jumbo shrimp. How can it be a jumbo and shrimp? That's a great point. Eric, you work there. Uh, you explain it. Say that again. Uh, Do they sell jumbo shrimp? Mm. Uh, it doesn't look like or it, no. sell shrimp and gumball. I mean, <laughs> oh, you can get shrimp with gumballs? That's crazy. Yeah, I've been told we don't sell a lot of shrimp there. That's what uh, oh. Charlie said, the fire mm. guy. Oh, who's uh, whose chocolate is that? That's Peter Weiss chocolate. Yeah, don't uh, don't no, no sealing the chocolate there, uh, John Hopwood. We got you on film. And we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to poach. Uh, here. I'm gonna have to poach uh, Scumpy's brother to work security here with uh, John Hopwood trying to steal people's chocolate. Well, yeah, you might you might have to you might have to take the entertainment and the security away from. Oh my goodness! Yes, yes. It's totally out of control. Y- yes, out of control. <laughs> Kyle Heavey says, with the fun of this show. I can only wish that Cyber Glenn was able to be there. Yes, our old friend, Virtual Glenn, but he's dead now. What about the Glenn who loves? Oh, yeah. yeah mm. I don't know. What's up no. with Glenn? He's mad at everybody now. I guess. Well, he, I don't know. No, he was he, uh, saw him. he was here before the he show. He was taken in with two fellas. Uh. He, he was very, two fellas? He had two fellas with him. Was Ricky one of them? Ricky Garbage? I don't think so. But he's no, stalking me. I don't think Glenn's currently upset with anyone. He's just very, very busy. He's a man about town, and he's I don't doing mean the that in business. Uh, yes, he is an expletive deleted well, man you know. of action. Oh yes, the, the people's mayor. What are you going to do? Right, he's he's out mayoring the people. <laughs> he might be the people's yeah. ultimate at large. <laughs> he's yes. out mayoring himself. I guess I don't know. Oh, oh, oh well, I did tell him that once. I was upset with him. I said, Glenn, you go mayor yourself. Many titles he has. Mm, I said it. I said it. And you I admit did it. And you went there? I went there. Wow. Oh, yeah. Do you know that uh, Joel Lavasser is the head of the old Franconians, gave him the title Colonel of the Urinel. Oh, very nice. And very and French. Nice, and the nice, you know, scarlet jacket. Very, uh, oh, he's wore, he was wearing a scarlet gold jacket piping. when he said it? That's oh, yeah. wonderful. So I'm the gold pipe. Oh, boy. And the epaulette. So. Uh- I'm about two blocks away, but I'm not going to have time to stop in. i got to oh. stop in the Panucci's and drop off a couple of gig posters. Oh, oh very uh, nice. When are you going to be there? Because I'm leaving right now. Yeah, do Maybe you? Maybe I can get one from my what? show and then bring it. Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm heading in there I'll probably, I don't know, as soon as I find a parking spot. and uh, All right, I'll see you there. Drop off a couple of posters, and i got to go to rehearsal. Otherwise, I'd stop in and hang out for a bit. But I don't think I really have time. So. Are you doing a show there, Scott? Uh, Au revoir. All right. Yeah, yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it in May. I want to drop a couple of posters off for him. All so right, can, you know, very nice. Get some advertising. Nice. Drop some yeah, business maybe I'll cards be able off for him. Maybe I'll drop by and see you guys do some jamming there. Mm. I haven't seen you guys do, live. Doing my marketing. You know, the DEF CON marketing. You know? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, uh, before you have to go, Scumpy, why don't you plug the show you have coming up and anything else you want to mention? Well, actually, we've got the Davion Show April 6th, the Davion Snowshoe Club on uh, 218 Wilson Street. And then uh, we got May 18th at the uh, at Panucci's right around the corner. What time? Panucci's. Uh, Panucci's, I'm not sure yet. I think, I, you know, I think we're going to do like 8 to 12 there, I think. All right, maybe 8, p- oh, 8, uh, 8 a.m.? <laughs> yeah, right. God, I barely make the morning show. Are you kidding me? I know. I'm joking. I can't sing in the morning. <laughs> All right. Panucci's, yeah. All right. That'd be cool. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, and then, I, and then we got a... Um, 
I'm booking something up in Concord. It looks like uh, oh. the uh, Pit Road. I, I think it's going to be June 1st. And we got something at the Deer Head we're trying to put together. I haven't have a, a, a solid date yet. And then there's a place out in Epsom. They just called me and they want us to play. So, geez, I don't know. You are, be busy. You are in demand, as they say. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing, yes. It really is. It really is. Yeah, fantastic. It's not a bad problem to have. It's worth getting out. Yeah, people want to uh, hear you sing. And then Lenny, of course, they'll help you out because he's your roadie. Uh, that's right. Lenny is the road manager. Very mm-hmm. good. Very good. All right, Scumpy, and are you going to be on the morning show at all this week, or or maybe you were and I just missed it? But... Uh, I'm not. I, I was gonna, I was going to be on tomorrow, but they're doing the um, the Bob Blarney breakfast thing oh, tomorrow. Yeah, so. is doing it with. Uh, it, and then my wife's my wife's got an appointment, some uh, medical thing, so I got to drop her off uh, early oh. in the morning at uh, at the only for just a, nothing major. Oh, a okay. Thing. All right, all right. But uh, everything's everything's good. Good, good. Good to hear. All right, Scumpy, we'll let you get to it. We know you got to get in there and, and do your thing. And uh, All right, guys. John Hopwood had to leave us. But uh, uh, but on behalf of he, uh, uh, Eric Gagnon, the new uh, entertainment reporter here on Matt Connors and Unleashed and I, we bid you adieu, good sir. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, keep it up. Right, bye, Scumpy. All right, Scumpy. Bye-bye. All right, the great uh, Jeff Scumpy Lorenz. So, well, it's, uh, John had to leave, but I'm very concerned uh, about that device that he had with him. Uh, I mean, I hate to think that everything that we're saying is being recorded. I think he's using it tonight for his uh, War thir- 13 uh, show. Ah, yes. So you didn't uh, you didn't see the R. Kelly interview, it sounds like. No, I don't really I don't really care to. Oh, now why is that? Oh, I agree with my mother. I'm, I'm tired of hearing about who people are. All these sexual innuendos. I agree with my mother. I, 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 I don't need to hear about it. You are a, a, a man Grant who... Grant uh, bad, but we, I'm just tired of it. You're just... I, I understand. Michael Jackson, and he's dead, and they're, they're, they're all over him. But my, my friend says they're after his money, which is probably true. Oh, so you don't believe the victims. You believe Michael oh, Jackson. I, I, I don't know what to believe, but I wasn't there. But I'm just saying they're, they're probably after his money. You know what R. Kelly? No, uh, well, maybe it's true, but you don't have a lot of money, but Michael Jackson does. You know what R. Kelly believes? He believes he can fly. Yeah, probably. He believes he can touch the sky. Yeah, but Michael Jackson's dead now, so, you know, I think just leave the guy alone, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what I think, you know? Maybe the guy was a pig, maybe he wasn't, but... uh... Macaulay Culkin said he was uh, all all, uh, good. Never did a, a thing wrong. The guy's dead now, you know. He is dead, Eric. I, I Were you shocked when you heard that our that that uh, Michael Jackson was dead? Uh, it wasn't because the guy was an extrinsic, as they say. You know, he was taking a lot of. Med- Would you be shocked? Drugs. Would you be shocked if I told you that R. Kelly was dead? Is he? I don't know. Is he? <laughs> yes, he is. I, I was just curious if you'd be shocked if I told you he was. Would you be? I, I don't know if those stories are true or not, but if it is, the, the, the guy's a pig. Like, if I said R. Kelly was dead and you said, oh, is he? And then I said, yeah, actually, he really is. Would you be shocked? Uh, at this point, I wouldn't be because suicide is a major problem in America. If he, if he, Why would you assume that he uh, committed suicide? If I told, so if I told you R. Kelly committed suicide, you wouldn't be shocked. He was a 23-year-old Olympic Singer, uh, uh, Olympic singer who just committed suicide. Let's get down to brass tacks, Eric. What if I told you that R. <laughs> Kelly had been eaten by wolves? Would you be shocked? Eaten yes. by wolves, Eric. How about that story with that guy who was almost eaten by a whale? Did you hear about that? He was almost eaten by a whale. Is yeah. this a, the kind of story they tell at places where they serve uh, uh, seafood? What was the story in the Bible about this guy who was in a whale for three days? Yeah, sounds like a whale of a tail to me. <laughs> you see what the I did story there? story really true, though. Oh, what what's true? This guy was in the ocean and for some reason. What was his name? Uh, Jonah or something? Jonah and the whale? Yeah. I, I don't remember too much from my childhood of uh, Catholic school from grade two to but grade this eight. This story is really true. It happened like last week. And he almost died. Oh, I thought you meant the, meant the story get out in the of there, Bible was true. The, the, the whale let him go. No, I did. I, actually, I did hear something about this. Uh, really I think it was on, uh, on NPR. Yeah, because I guess the whale, like, wasn't particularly interested in consuming the guy. Like, he was too, because he's not, like, he's not something the whale would normally eat. Because they're not natural predators of humans. But a bear can eat you, though. A bear can eat you. 
They're on. They're they're waking up now. So tell them. But a bear won't necessarily go out of his way to eat you. He's visited my parents' home many times, and I bet it's the same bear that comes. Mm. He tears down the bird feeder there. Yeah, because they're all strong, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they they then they leave. You ever wrestle a bear? No. Oh. But I tell my father, you know, you stop putting the bird food out. Would you be shocked if I told you I'd wrestle the bear? He doesn't listen. I think it's the same bear that visits. It's been going on for like six years now. Would you be shocked if I told you R. Kelly had wrestled a bear and then was eaten by wolves? Yeah, I think you're saying April Fool's are really. <laughs> no, but I do have some. Oh, wait a minute. Damn it. April April 1st isn't on a weekday this year, is it? Yes, it is on a Monday. April 1st is? Yep. My, my friend's uh, 60th oh, birthday. Oh, good. <laughs> Believe me, he's a fool. I have something planned, but I can't... Uh... I, I can't tell you what it is, Eric. Right, you're keeping it under the table. Give, that's all I give can it say. A, keeping it under the table, yes. All right. When I, when I let the uh, news out. Do you hear that story one time when I let the news out about Intel taking over the tackle tour? I heard about that. And Sarah Baudry has told me to keep it under the table. Yes. And boy, was she a little upset with me. That's why I've but always... But then she let it go because she knows I got a big mouth. So. Remember that day. <laughs> remember that day I told you all of my deepest, darkest secrets. Ever since then, I live in fear that you're just going to spill the... The beans and everyone will know everything about me but this year the tackle tour is happening now so mm-hmm. it, and uh they're gonna have some live entertainment and uh blah 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 and uh peter's always making fun of me he says yeah they only let you know bits and pieces because you blurted it out about the tackle tour last year you mm-hmm. the i said you're right i did you're right yes but uh, now but i i kind of understand the position you were in because you are a journalist you are an entertainment reporter. Right, so but Sarah somebody, Baldry told me to keep it under the table. Right, but she gives you this big scoop, and you just you couldn't help yourself. I understand, Eric. I completely understand. Right, it was hot news. I understand. Even, it was hot news. Even Carol Robito didn't know about it. <gasps> really? Yeah, but she found out about it later, and then when the next day rolled around. By the way, I heard something, that, and uh, apparently, because uh, you know how I'm a stickler for pronouncing names correctly, like uh, like Paul Cormier or Kim Jong Un. I also yeah. recently heard that Carol's. Uh, apparently, everyone says Carol's last name wrong. It's actually pronounced Ribidoo. I've never heard that. So before. make make sure you uh, call her that the next time you see her. She'll be very flattered that you that you uh, really? went out of your way to call her by her correct name. So yeah. something to keep in mind, Eric. Yes, yes. So uh, so very good, as as Peter White often says. He says that a lot. You ever notice that? He likes to say very good. I've never noticed that. Yes. I've never heard him say that. Except I never hear him say that during your entertainment report. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's a joke. He does give you a hard time, though, and that's why I think you can be poached. Yeah, but it's all, it's all makes for a good radio, though. He gives you a very hard time. Hello to uh, Fred Bonig, who says, We are in Austin at South by Southwest. Fred Bonig from the dailyripple.org. Are you a uh, frequent visitor of the Daily Ripple uh, there, uh, Eric? I mean, you should be. Uh, Perhaps you could become their really. entertainment reporter. Not really. Uh, and Fred dropped a uh, link in the Facebook live chat. Uh, on the Twitter, it says Jared Kushner's Harvard acceptance re-examined in light of college admission scandal. Have you been following this, Eric? What scandal now? So many of them. The uh, the college admission scandal. <laughs> you are the entertainment reporter, and you have all these uh, celebrities caught up in this college admission scandal, like Felicity Huffman. Well, and you know, uh, I tend to keep everything local. Oh, right. Yes. But this is, uh, well, I mean, you know, I've, I've heard you, uh, like when you talk about your show of the week or your uh, band of the oh, week, yeah, those, he, aren't, he didn't like my, uh, those aren't local. La, Lucy, um, uh, I love Lucy. He didn't like that. He said that show was too old. For show of the week? Yeah. He, I, I, I heard him uh, say something like the that show is 70 uh, well, years he, old. Well, but yeah. Uh, I just pick a show, you know. Right. Sometimes so, it gets a reaction out of them. Sometimes. It but doesn't. what what is the what is the the, the criteria beyond that? Does it well, have I just to be look it up online and just write it down and then I yeah I throw but, it but, on there. But There's but not but, really a lot of research. No. So so you don't uh, <laughs> you don't put any actual thought into it. You just kind of no. look it up and then blurt it out. I think eventually I'm going to end up those three traditions. Real now, show. why is uh, wait three traditions? Well, show of the week and artist of the week, and I think I, I think I, I, I think I, I, I'm going to kill it. Well, what was the third uh, one? Cause I got too many other things to, to talk about. No, but you said three traditions. So you oh, said artist of the week, old show of the week, and uh, movie of the week. Movie of the week. I think uh, I think I'm gonna kill it. Really? You're already, you're already here first. 
Heard it here first. Time to freshen. Eric, yeah, Easy G, freshening things up. Why well, used to announce all the birthdays and stuff, but that, that took too much time. Keeping so it fresh. Keeps it keeps it away. Right. I do like to do the anniversary, so because you press that button, it says, happy anniversary, happy new. I like that. But. Right. You like that, huh? Or when I announce somebody having a baby, it presses, ah. Right, baby right. Crying. You know what I wish he, he would. He had a, an artist uh, the other day. Uh, you probably know who he is. Uh, Never heard of him. Ha, I'm kidding. You haven't I forget said his who name. He's yet. having a baby soon. He oh pressed, my goodness! And he pressed the button. Wow, that's. Uh, you know what he should do is he should play that song. You're having my baby. You like that song, Eric? That's a good song, right? Well, Remember do that? Have, do you have that song? No, I don't. Well, I mean, I probably have it somewhere. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Slimy bung. Oh, this is uh, Slimy Bunk. Uh, this is for you, Eric. Yes, you have a you have a question or a comment for our entertainment reporter, uh, Easy G. Slimy Bung. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Slimy Bung. Very good. All right. Slimy Bung, Eric. Now, what do you what do you think of that? Uh, you you don't get that on the morning show, do you? This is a well, rare opportunity. We get some pretty bizarre phone calls. Last week we got a call. Where's the moose? <gasps> And then Peter, uh, the guy hung up, and Peter says, well, if you've been listening to the show, the guy's been gone for a while. Yeah, the moose is loose. I don't mind who calls, but he says, can you just not hang up? What w- now, would you be shocked if I told you that R. Kelly had been trampled to death by a moose? Yeah. Would, would you find that shocking? Yeah. And okay. then eaten by wolves? Yeah. After he'd already been trampled? You know, because what happened is, Eric, uh, <laughs> tell me if at any point you find this shocking. He was trampled. He left the uh, interview with Gail King. He was immediately trampled oh, by a moose, and then and then a band of not just wolves either werewolves came along <laughs> and ate his remains. Can you even believe it? R. Yeah. Kelly trampled to death and eaten, my friends. <laughs> a, a fitting end, if you ask me. He believed he could fly. He should have flown away before the moose came and trampled him. Yeah. Now, why, why the WrestleMania? Let's get to that now. Oh, WrestleMania! I, I went yes. to the list of uh, potential matches, and it, it's no holes barred. I mean, no rules. He wrestles like once a year now, or maybe a couple times a year. Triple H and uh, Batista. Now that's Dave that's, Batista. He's that, a big Hollywood actor now. That's ridiculous. You know, the two old farts, and they, oh. they should just put themselves aside and. Give that 20 minutes to somebody else. Triple H wants their, that WrestleMania payday. Their time is... He doesn't need the money. And the well, I know. He's don't need it. They're old. But he's a New Hampshire guy, Eric. We Are should support him. Are they going to wheel him. him out in the wheelchair? I'm Triple H of, from I'm New Hampshire. I'm tired of Triple H, I'm tired of them. Ah! Ah! ah. That's they're, fun. They're so old school. It's nostalgia. That's an old fart wrestling. It's like when they when they beat up uh, Ric Flair the other day on his birthday. See, I thought that was well done. I thought that was a good segment. That was segment. ridiculous. That was ridiculous because they shouldn't be beating up on a senior citizen. The only thing, uh, well, yeah, that's what makes Batista a bad guy, beating up 70-year-old Ric Flair. I know, but he could have a heart attack and die. He almost died last year in the real world. Oh, for real, yeah. He did almost die. He was in the hospital, he but he fought back. He was a big-time alcoholic. He's the nature boy. He used to drink like 20 or 30 beers a day. Son. 20 or 30 beers. Well, that's, uh, well, that's even more than I drink. I want to check out that new place. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. Hop not across the street. Pretzel and beers. What is it? Pretzel and beer place. Great like townhouse. Town but you got to see the neighborhood. We've got a dive Oops. bar. Sorry about that. Have you checked that out place? Out? I made a little mistake there. No, I haven't. What do they, they have there? for like a week, and I just wanted to check it out and say hello. And, the, and I said, oh, you open yet? And the lady said, oh, I can serve you a beer. I said, oh, I'm not interested in the beer. I just wanted to say hi and see the- how business is doing. So oh, it's been doing all right. Oh, yeah. Everybody just assumes you want a beer. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to play the Ric Flair woo. You don't like beer? I I just want to say hi. I don't drink beer, no. Oh, yeah. You just went to say hi? Right. Never been there before. Were you doing research for your entertainment report? Yes, check it out. Now, Eric, we've never discussed this. Uh, I'm going to need, if you're going to be the entertainment reporter on here, I'm 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 going to need at least five or six minutes uh, each segment on the art of French meme, which a lot of people mispronounce. They think it's mime. It's actually meme. It's very important to me. Look, hey, look, I mean, check it out, right? Look, if if you're watching on Facebook, you can see, look, Eric, look, I'm trapped in a box. I'm total. What am I going to do? I'm totally trapped in this box. See, I'm like, I'm like a meme master, right? I'm like a master memer. For real. Did you see that just now? Like, uh, I, it looked like I was legitimately trapped in a box, like a see-through transparent box. You're oh, yawning, God. Eric. I, I almost feel as though I somehow exhaust you. I know what would pep you up. Here's what you need. This will wake you up. Woo! There you go. Oh, there you go. Yes. 
Do you like that or the air horn better? Yeah, I've never seen that guy live, Ric Flair. Rick Flair, that guy. How dare you? That's, That's Rick Flair. How many times I went to wrestling, he was always in WCW. When he the came Nature Boy. When he came out of WWE. I don't think I ever saw him. Well, I know. I know. If I go to the wrestling show in July, which hasn't been announced yet at, at this new arena, the uh, I'm hoping that the uh, Daniel Bryan will come. Daniel Bryan, one yes. Of my I know the guy that works there. I do enjoy him as a they villain. Can't stand the guy. He's more of an old school wrestler. He likes the old guys. Who does? A friend of mine over there. Over where? Uh, stand manager. Oh, do you have friends at Creamland who like uh, wrestling? Uh, I don't know. I. I I only been there one, four hours so far. So. Oh right, you don't you don't like like when you start a new job, you don't get right into the wrestling talk. Uh, no, I just try to focus on what I'm doing. Oh, what fun is good, that? Want to make a good first impression? Oh, uh, you want to impress Q? Right. Yes. So he keeps me around. Yes. Because the uh, they got a, a, a running uh, gag around the uh, Peter White show, morning show is Daryl Dion. You ever met the guy? Have I ever met Daryl Dion? Right. No, I can't say that I have. They went around the room. <laughs> I'm kidding, they went of around course. The room lot, I, see, I see him every Thursday. I Eric. lost a lot. Yeah, I lost a lot of jobs over the years, unfortunately. not proud of that. But Yeah. And Daryl said, well, he lost about a month. And we went around the room. How oh, long are going to last? I forget what Peter said. But then uh, Michael Martineau said, oh, I think it lasts to the end of, end of October, almost, until they close the place. And then, I don't forget what Lenny said. But Daryl was, Darryl said, hey, it lasts about a month. Why do you uh, why do you lose all these jobs? Are they uh, are, are your coworkers upset about your uh, uh, that numerous, you never saw Ric Flair back n- in the day? Numerous Woo! reasons. <laughs> numerous reasons. Numerous. Eric, I'll tell you what, and this is my pledge to you here on this show as our new entertainment reporter on Matt Connor Turner Unleashed. <laughs> you have a job for life, my oh, friend. Really? A job for life. Woo! Yes, yes. Life. And every year you're going to get a raise. Wow. Yes. Peter Weiss never paid me a dime. I know. And neither will I. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, but uh, but but I will. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I will write a formal uh, performance review, and I will say nice things about you in the review, and that's kind of like a raise, right? I mean, it's a All raise right. to your self-esteem. <laughs> you know, if you do a good job, it really hinges on one thing, Eric. Uh, how good a job you do on the French meme uh, segment, uh, each entertainment report. It yeah. really kind of all hinges on, and not kind of. It really entirely hinges on that. Oh, Everything else is ancillary. Did you, did you hear the uh, beginning of the? Um, oh, the second hour of the uh, Peter White show this morning. I did not. Well, no, I mean, well, I heard part of it, but I didn't hear it like from the beginning of the second hour. Well, I'll, re- I'll replay uh, something I said earlier. I heard dribs and drabs. People were people were listening this morning. Oh, I'm um, at the uh, Bible study yesterday, and this lady walks up to me. It was all over. She goes, "Hey, are you on the Peter White morning show?" I said, yeah, I am. Goes, oh, I love that show. And she says, I love Carol Robito and Peter White. And Carol Robito. And, and, and she says, hey, mm. you do such a great job. She goes, I love you too. She gives me a big hug. Oh, she wow. Says, Boy, she says, you're famous. I said, oh, wow. I don't know about that. I said, I just, I love the show. So you got yourself. And then a, another friend of mine said, I've heard you on the show before too. He says, I, and I, so I gave him one of those magnets that Peter White gave mm-hmm. me over the years. I bet you he did. Says, I'm going to start listening to the show. I said, well, great. So you got yourself a groupie. I mean, he, is, he said, and he said, "Well, maybe you want an autograph." I said, "No, I'm not giving any autographs." <laughs> oh, you're well. Oh, you're okay. You're too big a star to give an autograph. I'm not doing autographs. Okay, right. That was fu- so funny. She gave me a hug and everything. Oh my! God. Wow. So you got a little groupie there. <laughs> Just take her home. No, I'm not taking her home. Oh, it was at church. That would be wrong, I guess. Right? right. Or would it be? We're just friends. That uh, okay. That was the just, if just I had a dime every time somebody told me in the city of Manchester, I'd say, yeah, you heard you were on the radio. Mm-hmm. Not you. What if you run into her again somewhere? Like, what if you're out I somewhere and you run into her? Down. Yeah, what if she pops into Creamland one day, you know, and then you're like... Uh, oh, she knows that. I don't think... I don't, she, I don't know if she knows that works. Maybe she pops in to surprise you. She's, and she's, That's fine. What would you do? And she'd be like, I can't stop thinking about you. You're famous. And, oh. No, I don't. I'm what sorry. time do you get off? And, no. and and then you'd be like, what time? What time? What, what time do you want? What time do you want me to? I don't think she wants. I don't think. Well, I don't know, that. Eric. I mean, see, this is the thing. <laughs> this is what happens with fame. You uh, become a you you become famous. You become an I'm international sex symbol. I'm not. Famous. And then you got uh, <laughs> ladies coming well, up to you at though. church. I always and, say uh, though, you never know who's listening. That's right. You I know. tell you that Ted Gasser story. Did I ever tell you that one? No, I, when I was on the um, almost afraid to hear when it. I was but... on the um, 
Oh, God Almighty. This is funny. God Almighty. Where's Gerard Eric, Show? we were just talking about church. Please. Where's Gerard Show? And I oh, we don't. Show a lot. Yeah, we don't talk about him, but that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. But anyway, I had to. Not my fault. That. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so then at the meeting, when he was <gasps> there, he said, Hey, I heard you on that show. He said, mm-hmm. What can I do to turn your opinion around to vote for me from there? Oh. I, vo- I vote for Patrick Arnold. Uh huh. And uh, I, I just stretched the truth a little bit. I said, well, I really haven't made my mind out 100% where I, I had anyways. Uh-huh. I was getting t- I'm tired of his act. Yeah. And uh, But it was funny. He heard me on the show. Uh-huh. Yeah. He was listening. See? He See? Was, he was on the show every week. Everyone knows he who you are. He came on the show every week live. Pretty soon you're not going to be able to go anywhere without being mobbed <laughs> by uh, by adoring I, fans. I, I, I think I, I don't think that's going to ever happen. Well, now, no, wait, now what does Mary Poppins say? If you believe it, it will, it will happen. happen. Yes. So there you go. I'll just hire Lenny for my security. There you go. You're going to need security. <laughs> the uh, I won't the, be able to pay him anything, but I'll right. Free, well, but. that's that's all right. I'm sure he'll be happy to help, happy to protect oh, yeah. the entertainment <laughs> reporter. Oh boy. So how do you feel about uh, Batista's nose ring? By the way, to me, it feels very 1998. Oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, you didn't notice that? Batista, yes, he has a nose ring. I assume he'll remove it when he wrestles Triple H at WrestleMania in case follow, he gets hit in the nose. I just follow it online. I don't follow it at home because I don't have cable. So. You don't have cable. Yeah, I don't. No. Uh, I, don't I, I only watch uh, on Hulu every week. I watch NXT and 205 Live. Those are the two shows. Yeah, two hundred five live. If they if they do if they are coming to the Snow Arena, they they show that after SmackDown Live, and they, they, yes. they played on the network. You know? Yes, yes. And I'll stay for that too because I like to see any kind of wrestling. Yeah, because they show it on the WWE Network, and then the right. next day it goes up on Hulu, and that's they, what they do with NXT as well. They put it on. The, they put it in the can. They it, say. In the can. Yeah, I went to wrestling years ago, and one of the worst attention I was there like five and a half hours, and they they it was back in the day where everything was tape delayed. And show it later. When would this have been? Oh God, this is before Monday Night Raw. So oh, okay, yeah, because like years because I know back then they they would tape like a month, like when they had their oh, yeah, syndicated was, shows. Awesome. They would I, tape like a month's I worth of shows on in TV. one night. Oh, did you? I hit like third row. I don't know how I did it, but I got third row and I saw the same guys come out all night. Oh yeah! Wow. Oh yeah. Did you get any autographs? No. Did they? Did, did anyone ask for your autograph? I did, I did get As some autograph. One future time. Uh, entertainment JFK reporter. Ones. You got JFK's autograph. No, JFK and the wrestling used to come there before the Snow Arena. Oh, Did you oh. ever go there? Uh, yes. I saw the uh, Triple H, the, not Triple H, but um, Shawn Michaels and the Diesel there, and back in the day. Would you be shocked if I told you that JFK was actually uh, eaten by a moose? Yeah, but that, most that, people think he was. That shot. arena was named after him, wasn't it? The JFK Arena, right? No, it's a coincidence. It is. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with JFK. What's the name after that? I don't know. They, they just uh, some guys were playing Scrabble and they were like, "Oh, this looks good. We'll call no. it." No. Yeah. Someone told me it was named after the president. You should uh, talk to whoever told you that because okay. they're messing with you. Did Ric Flair tell you that? Woo! You can't trust the Nature Boy. Yeah. He's the dirtiest player in the game. He is. Yes. Did you see uh, on social media all the uh, the uh, uh, Ronda Rousey and uh, Becky Lynch? They got uh, pretty uh, not PG with their little Twitter banter back and forth recently. Yeah, that was fascinating. Becky Lynch is injured, so. Well, uh, in storyline, yeah, not for real. Oh, you think it's all fake? Yeah, she's going to be at uh, WrestleMania. All right. I think she'll win. I think she will, too. She's the biggest star in wrestling right yeah, now. I read online because you got to believe everything you read online that Ronda, Ronda's taking time off to have a baby. Oh, yes. And she's on the contract for another couple of years. So it's, obviously you can't wrestle and be pregnant. It's, I, 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 that can't happen. Hello to uh, in the Facebook live chat. We have Perry M. Durant who says, I like to watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine on Hulu. You know, I've never seen Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but I would probably very much enjoy it. Everyone tells me I would love it. Have you ever have you seen that show, uh, Eric? Uh, oh, I've heard of it. With uh, the, the, the police, uh, they're in the police precinct uh, I've in heard Brooklyn. of it. I, I might have seen it. What's the guy's name? Andy, uh, the actor who's in it. Uh, his name escapes me now. I forget his name. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dave Kopaz uh, from Red Pill Paul joins us in the Facebook live chat. Hello, Dave. And Carol Becker is there. Uh, she says, hello, Matthew. Carol Becker. I don't know if you know about this, Eric. Carol Becker is going to be going out on a date with our very own John Hopwood. Yeah, what's that happening? Oh, is it Andy Samberg? Is that the name of the actor? Uh, when is that happening? I don't know. Carol, uh, when is that happening? When are you going on a date 
with uh, with John Hopwood. Oh, Carol loves police. Wow. Do you mean uh, actual law enforcement or the band? Do you like the band? Has has uh, the police ever been your artist of the week, Eric, on your entertainment no. report? Okay. Why do you say that with such disdain? But I'm not doing it anymore. I decided to kill it. Oh, you're definitely killing the. Uh, you're not doing the entertainment report. No, no, no. I'm doing. I'm going to kill that part. Oh, oh, you had me worried there. I was afraid. Artist you... of the week. I'll show of the week. I'm I was. Gonna, I was afraid. Uh, I was afraid for a second there. Yeah, you weren't. Uh, it up. I was afraid for a second there. You just weren't going to do the entertainment report anymore. No, I, I think it's the time off before. And I, I did it. I did take a, a week off one time, and Ryan took my place. Because Peter White, Peter, that was, that was kind of a nightmare. Peter White does <laughs> not like it if you refuse to do your designated te- segment, as you might remember. Traffic is good. That's it. Uh, P- Peter doesn't like that. You got to do your segment, or he'll that get. W- that was funny when. Uh, um, Oh, yeah, a friend of mine was asking me yesterday when I was at the uh, Bible study. He said, do you guys on the morning show, do you do the weather and the, and the traffic? I said, we used to do that. That was the moose's job, but he's gone. Is it appropriate to be talking about the morning show at uh, Bible study? Uh, the show can be a bit salacious at show, times. I mean, right? that Bible study was over. So. Oh, oh, okay, I gotcha. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerston Unleashed. Who's this? Hey, Matt, this is Jim. Um, I was wondering what you were saying about JFK, how he got eaten by a moose. Is that really true? Uh, He was actually trampled by a moose, (laughs) and then he was eaten by wolves. And that's uh, one of the big uh, misconceptions about the JFK assassination. Yes, a lot of people don't realize this. If you watch the Zapruder film very carefully, uh, you can see the moose uh, leap into the car and trample him. And then a uh, a couple of wolves come from behind and, and devour him. It's uh, quite uh, gruesome, actually. That's cool. Uh, the, is the airport named not named after him either? It's not. No, uh, that was. Uh, it's like some uh, secret uh, secret code or something. I heard a different story about how it got the name JFK than that than just being a secret code. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, um, someone was trying to order a pizza, and they said, I want just fucking pepper. Oh, no, and that's when I have to hang oh, up on Oh, no. I knew it was coming, because uh, he, he always does that. But uh, fortunately, we're no, on a delay, so I can just No, you can't do that on it. the air. Come on, Brigade. Well, the thing is, he does. Uh, he's kind of he's he's kind of fun, but then when he swears, it's like I have to dump out. So right, I can't. Uh, you, you, you can't say that word. By I'd, the way, I'd like to. Uh, no, you cannot, Eric. You cannot say. That. Have you ever slipped, Eric, and sworn on the air? Have you ever been a potty mouth and Peter White during no, the morning I really show has to hit the dump button on you? People have said the uh, S word on the show, and when he repl- when he when the show's over, when he reboots it for the two o'clock replay, uh-huh. he tells me uh, after when the show's over, he said he has to uh, told me that once. He has to uh, edit that out. Oh, because of you and your potty mouth? No. Oh, oh. Other people do it. Oh, okay. Do you have a, a potty mouth uh, when you're not on the air? Do you just walk uh, around I, swearing? I try not to. You try not to. Oh, but I, mean, I swear to myself. But I you not. swear you you shouldn't swear yourself, Eric. I try not to. Positive self talk is crucial. Like my ex wife used to say, when you raise your middle finger, it's like swearing to God. When you raise your middle finger, it's like swearing to God. Right. She didn't well, like that. <laughs> why? It's, not a good, it's, not, it's really not a polite thing to say. What? Wait. Why? Uh, okay. I'm just trying to figure out More why. Also when you tell someone, you know, f you, you know, right? Is that a polite thing to do? Uh, not general, not in polite company. It's right. Not, so no, she said it's like swearing to God. What? If you ra- if you, if you flip somebody off, it's like right. swearing at God. So what did she do one time when somebody cut her off? She flipped them off. I, said, I told her, I said, Holly, what are you doing? He said, oh, whoops. I, I slept. Ah, she, she was, a, she was a hypocrite. And that's why, and that's why you divorced her, isn't it? No, she divorced me. Oh, is Why did she divorce you? Because she was a hypocrite and she was ashamed of herself. No, she threw me out. Never. You know, who's been divorced uh, several times. Really? Well, the nature boy. Jay Lowe is, is her fourth marriage now coming up to uh, A-Rod. You must have heard about that. What? what? Jay Lowe's getting married to A-Rod. And now they're saying A-Rod she cheated is? on her. Or, oh, I don't know. A-Rod, is that that... Uh, Cheater there. I'm not a sports guy. That's the uh, Rodriguez. Yankee the Yankee guy. Yeah. There's a whole Seinfeld episode it's about like him, the isn't PEDs there? there. Perry in the uh, Facebook live chat says, I can't stand... For that poo-poo language, well, I believe it. Yeah, I mean, that's what you get, though, with a potty mouth like Eric Agnon, apparently. Or, no. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's his ex-wife who's the potty mouth. Uh, forgive me. This one. Uh, Carol says, uh, the poo-poo talk has to be done uh, tastefully for me to laugh. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm with you. 
Uh, not like the uh, fake food order calls. Uh, can't see the guest too far away. Eric, well, how can you? I mean, he's wearing a bright orange shirt. Eric, is that what they make you wear at Creamland? Do they oh, give the, you a yeah, choice? Different colors. I like, orange is my favorite color. Orange is also my father's favorite color. Yeah, orange and red. I, like. I think you're about the same age. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Um, but uh, so the, so you can choose what other colors you have to choose from. Oh, yeah, all different colors. But I saw it yeah, on the table, orange. So I said, can I have that one? She goes, sure. So Creamland promotes diversity. Yeah, they had a they had a fellow there. He's he, uh, I don't remember his name, but he has Down syndrome, and he says I do the cleaning here, like dishes and take out the trash, and that's good. That's good for the community. They hire people with disabilities. By the way, Jenny is being a uh, a potty mouth in the Facebook live chat. I think your ex wife has uh, uh, rubbed off on her. Tell her that's not nice. That's not nice, Jenny. Uh, she can hear you actually. Oh, uh, that's not nice, Jenny. Uh, Perry says uh, calling into a talk show and ordering food is such an old and not funny prank. You know, a, a, another uh, very great man uh, said that once uh, or a few times. And Carol says it really makes me mad, Perry. Yes. Uh, Jenny said uh, if it was an original bit, it would be great. Right. Replying to Perry. Yes. I think uh, uh, I think there's a fight brewing in the Facebook live chat, Eric. We might need you to mediate. Yeah. So, uh, so, so that guy's done that trick before then, huh? Yes. Shame on him. If it's really even a him. Is that, oh, my God. I just realized something all this time. Is that actually your ex-wife calling and punking the show? No. Oh, my God. That's your no. ex-wife no. with her potty mouth no. calling. And I know why she's doing it, too. I just realized. I'm just I'm putting it all together in my head. She's no. doing it to sabotage your opportunity to be the entertainment <laughs> reporter on Matt Connerton and Unleashed. No wonder you divorced her, Eric. You did the right no, thing walking out on her. Me, oh, that's right. Well, whatever. You, you did the right thing driving her away. Uh, so she felt like she had to divorce you because you are a man of principle. You are an upstanding citizen. You are locally famous. You go to Bible study. Meanwhile, she uh, impersonates a man, calls the show, swears just to get you in trouble and ruin your opportunity to finally live your dream of being the entertainment reporter on Matt Connerton Unleashed. A dream that you've no doubt had since you were a small boy. Only maybe the last thing on our brain. As I've uh, I've been on the uh, on the air now for twenty. I don't know if you know this, Eric. I've been on the air for twenty eight years here at WMNH. Wow, I wasn't uh, aware it was that long. Well, I am in my uh, early seventies, as you know. Peter's wow. been here for uh, thirty one years. It's all very wow. exciting. So we've had these long careers, and I can understand why you'd want to be a part of it. Yeah. So. I'm gonna have to go in about ten minutes. This late. In about ten minutes. What's in that folder, by the way? Or is that a folder? Or is that just a stack of papers? Oh, this is a Creamland photo. And this is the uh, what? What's oh, what's in there? This is, is that like notes. secret Creamland documents? No, those notes, and this is my uh, relay for life on selling some uh, uh, Fisher Cat tickets. I do like uh, that we uh, here in this area we have a, a restaurant called Creamland and a restaurant called uh, Goldenrod. I find that uh, it just reminds me of uh, a certain segment of the film industry. So, what do you have like orientation uh, documents and things? Did you oh, have to watch videos? No, no videos. No. Oh, they don't have like videos about uh, not uh, sexually harassing coworkers and things like that. Uh, I think I was, it is yeah. the Me Too era. Yeah. Well, yeah, we didn't get into that now. Right. Everybody respects each other over there so far. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's very nice, Eric. That's very nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Carol Becker says, uh, I stand with hashtag Perry. I can't say that about all the other jobs I've been to, but so far this one here seems to be uh, pretty good. You Do you think this is the one? Do you think this is like this is the job you're going to stick with, you're going to retire from someday? Well, it's or, only seasonal, so. Uh, so what? Maybe you'll be, uh, next thing you know, you'll be running the place. Uh, I don't know about that, but. Take it day day by day, day I, by I, I day. Buy my first day. Cause I don't know if I ever told you that story about Belmont Hall. Did I ever tell you that one? Uh, Belmont Hall. Woo! A couple of years ago, I got hired at Belmont Hall to be the dishwasher. You know what? I did some dishes today too, and I, it went pretty well. Was there someone named Joyce there when you worked there? I have no idea, but I only okay. it lasted two and a half hours, and the boss had been there <laughs> for a long time. And Wait. she gave me fifteen dollars, and she said, "Hit the road." I oh said, my what? God! I said, "What do you mean hit the road?" I said, "Oh, she goes You're going too slow." I said, well, you didn't give me, give me a chance. I've only been here for two and a half hours. He goes, well, it didn't work out. See you later. Oh, my God. For real? Yeah, she was really rude about it. So I, I don't Did I, she say? Uh, I don't I don't go there anymore. Did well, she it's say? It's the funniest thing because my father's retired now. 
and he has an old fart breakfast club. He goes with the guys, and the week after, I got canned there. He he went there for breakfast, but I told him, I said, you can go there, but I'm not going there. Nothing against the place. You know, people can support Belmont Hall if they want. I don't support Belmont Hall. Right, yes. Now, they, they gave me a raw deal. They were really they rude. They gave you? Wow. $15, yep. And they and and uh, told me to hit the road. Did she say? Did, did she say hit the road or did she? Yeah, she knows I've been here a long time. I, I know if, if people's not good enough, then goodbye. Because you know what I like to say. Uh, I couldn't believe it. You know what I like to say if, if if I'm firing somebody, I like to say hit the bricks. That was really rude. And then if they look at me and they're like, "What hit the bricks? What's that?" I say, "Take the beltway around this one, Bucko." Yeah, that was one of my shortest jobs in the history of jobs. Yeah, so two and a half hours is. You, wait, you, hold on, hold on. You said that's one of your shortest. Yeah. <laughs> There's something shorter than that. No, that's the shortest. Oh, okay. Well, what, what's your second shortest? Uh, I worked at another place in town. It was uh, it, it was in a too cold of an environment, so I only lost. You're really years. a special guy. Too I, cold. I, plus, I had bronchitis that day, so. Uh, I, I, right. I couldn't last. It was too cold. Yeah, I was in a freezer environment. It was in a freezer. Were you in the in a freezer the entire time? Well, it was just a cold environment because they were making pies and stuff. And uh huh. I didn't like it. Right. I, I, I said goodbye. Oh, so you quit? I did. Oh wow, you. But this job I was fired from because the uh, it was really my my fault. I don't think I was given a given a fair shot. Mm-hmm. I mean, how can they know if you're doing a good job in only two and a half hours? Right. Well, what was the job? Dishwasher. I don't know. I think that's probably the kind of job where you can figure it out in two and a half hours if, if you're doing a good job or not. I don't know about that. Uh, what were the metrics of, upon which you were judged? I guess it wasn't fast enough. Same with the uh, job oh. down the street here when I was doing the uh, nursing home. Eric, have you ever seen the video for Nothing But a Good Time by Poison? Oh, yeah, I like that band, yeah. Yeah, you like I that video? I've seen arena many times over the years. Because in the beginning of the, uh, do you remember what happens in the beginning of the video for uh, uh, for Nothing But A Good Time? I can't say I yeah, have, but they came to the Snow Arena a couple years ago with Telsa and uh, Death Leopard. That was one of the best shows. I've seen them a few times. Uh, I didn't go down and sit and watch it, but I heard the whole show. And, oh, my God, it was so good. So in the video for Nothing But A Good Time, it starts with uh, this Bunch guy. Of metalheads. No, it starts with this guy. He's wash. He's working in the restaurant washing dishes, and the boss comes and yells at him. Oh yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. So here, I'm going to play the beginning of it, and tell me if this is. Uh, tell me if this is what happened to you. Tell me. Tell me if if this is similar. So he's washing dishes. Very busy kitchen. Yep. And here comes the boss. Hey man, better get jamming. Nick's on his way back here. Kiss is playing in the background. Hey, you! I told you before, I'm paying you to wash dishes, not to listen to that, that rock and roll. I got a whole restaurant full of people out there. You're moving in two speeds, slow and stop. They either get your button gear or you're out of here. Get it? Move! Is that what happened to you, Eric? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay. Did the guy say, uh, wait, was it a guy or a female? Uh, there was a female, and then the nursing home was a guy. Wait, 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 at the dishwashing job? They were both dishwashing jobs. I'm confused. The nursing home was a dishwashing job, and you bring food up to the to the. You got clients. fired. You got fired from two dishwashing jobs. Oh, I got fired a lot of jobs, but the uh, <laughs> the, uh, the the nursing home job was down the street, and uh, Daryl thought well, it felt bad because he he bring me to my last day when I got canned. Well, plus I had hit the lady with a cart, and that didn't help. Yeah, tell me about that, Eric. Well, I was nervous because I was supposed to be at the Snow Arena for three thirty, or I think it was either three thirty or four thirty check in. Uh huh. This was supposed to be done by two, and I was working with the boss, and I wasn't getting it done. I still had like a whole mess of dishes. It was four, three floors, and then downstairs it was just out of control. Mm-hmm. And I was supposed to do it myself, and I just couldn't keep a pace. Uh, in the uh, the boss was on me to get it done, and I was running around. I was so nervous. I knew I had to work a double that day down at the snow arena, mm-hmm. and I was getting the car going. I wasn't paying attention. And I hit the lady, and I know she complained, obviously, because she has the right to complain. You had, what, a cart full of dishes? Right, you know, the big blue cart. It was stacked with dishes, you know. Okay. And I hit the lady. It was in a wheelchair, and I startled her. It didn't hurt her or anything. So the it. lady was in a wheelchair. A little old lady. Like An old lady. Now. A 90-year-old lady. Right, I, I said I was sorry, but it didn't matter. And you got the cart, and you're like, broom, broom, and you just ran over her. Right, so I couldn't get this done fast enough, and then when I came back a couple days later, I got canned. And what happened to her? Is she dead? 
No, she's fine. But oh, okay. She could be dead by now. I don't know. Most likely. As she, or at the very least, she probably had a broken hip after you ran her over. We have a call. Hi. Welcome to Matt Connerton <laughs> Unleashed. Who's it? Yes. Is this Melania? Is that you? Yes, Melania. How are you? What What can we do for you? I'm sorry, what? Why are you people so mean, man? Well, I know... <laughs> I know it sounds like people have been mean to Eric, but I kind of think he deserved to get... I mean, he killed a woman with a cart. Oh, no. I didn't kill the woman. <laughs> well, I've never heard uh, Eric, our, our entertainment reporter, his first day here officially at Matt Connor and Unleashed. It's I've, never heard, I've never heard him say a bad thing about your husband, actually. Nick? Yes. Is that who is there next to you? That That's him in the orange shirt. That's our entertainment reporter. Nick? You like him? He, he make my money. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Really? Oh, Melania. Wow. I've never... Uh, does, I don't know if your husband even uh, gets you to make that sound. I'm surprised you got time to call up this crazy <laughs> show. Wow! Yeah, Are you busy with doing the people's business. She's. You would think she'd be busy uh, running uh, her anti cyberbullying campaign. Yeah. Oh, Nick, you're so mean. No, Melania, I support uh, everything that you do. Uh, Carol Becker in the Facebook <laughs> live chat says, "And I thought the food order caller was bad. This is so much worse." Uh, Carol Becker clearly not a, not a, not a fan of Melania. I ain't either. Oh, <gasps> you are mean oh, to Melania. Nick. I know. Well, I'm going to play a song for you, Melania, in a couple minutes. When Eric's getting ready to leave, we'll take a break, and I'll, I'm going to play a song especially for you, and that'll make everything better. Oh, oh thank yeah. you, Melania. i got to get going, so All right. we'll see you guys later. All right, Eric Agnon, the new entertainment reporter here. No, no, Whoa. no, no, no. Don't start rumors. Well, I'll think about it. And, uh, I thought about it, and the answer is no. I'm going to email you a contract. I think you'll find... <laughs> It's uh, very... Uh, I'm loyal to Peter. It's very... Yes, of course you are. But, uh, well, I can't, I can't think of anything to say to that, really, because uh, loyalty is a good thing. But, uh, you know, uh, an opportunity is an opportunity. All right. So Eric Gagnon uh, leaves us, and uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be back with more Matt Connerton Unleashed in the Afternoon, live here on WMNH 95.3 FM. But Melania, if you're still listening... This is for you. Orange face, baby. You all right? Bust down, Melania. You all right? I want to see you bust down. Bust down, Melania. Bust down, Melania. I want to see you bust down. Pick it up. Now break that down. Break it down. Speed it up. Then slow that down on the wall. Slow it down. Bust it. Bust down, bust down, bust it, bust it, bust down on the wall. Over, bust down, Melania, bust down, Melania. I want to see you bust down. Over, pick it up, now break that shit down, break it down. Speed it up, then slow that shit down on the wall. Slow it down, bust it, bust down, bust down, bust it, bust it, bust down on the wall. Over, orange face baby, you all right? I'm every woman's fantasy. Orange face baby, the American people voted me as their presidents. Their fault. They're stupid. Don't be mad at me. I want to see you bust down, bust down. Bend that shit over on the wall. Make that shit clap. She threw it back, so I had to double back on the wall. Say the name, bitch, I'm Trump. I'll keep running, two terms ain't enough. And I promise nobody with the smoke. I'm a red and I'm a do it. You gon' love it, I'm gon' get these damn votes. I got the f up, then I hit the shoulder lane. Keep shit player, I'm the president. Don't act like you ain't heard of me. Orange face, baby. Bust down, Melania. I wanna see you bust out. Bust down. Bend that shit over. You're alright. Now make that shit clap on the wall. Now toot that thing up. Toot it up. This made me hungry. I need some burgers and a fresh bust cup. Down, bust down, Melania. Bust down, Melania. I want to see you bust it's down. Over. Pick it up. Now break that shit down. Break it down. Speed it up. Then slow, slow that shit down on the wall. Slow it down. Bust it. Bust down. Bust down. Bust it. Bust it. Bust down on the wall. Over. Bust down, Melania. Bust down, Melania. I want to see you bust it's down. Over. Pick it up. Now, now break, break that shit down. Break it down. Speed it up. Then slow that shit down on the wall. Slow it down. Bust it. Bust down. Bust down. Bust it. Bust it. Bust down on the wall. Thank you very much. 
the yes, three go ahead. rules of go hate ahead. speech. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I will begin with my most important question. Did you see the Grammys? And if so, what did you think of Jennifer Lopez's performance? Who? J-Lo. I don't know her. Thank you. And uh, now my follow-up. Will you, in fact, declare a national emergency at the southern border? I'll sign the final papers as soon as I get into the Oval Office. And we will have a national emergency. And we will then be sued. And they will sue us in the Ninth Circuit, uh, even though it shouldn't be there. And we will possibly get a bad ruling, and then we'll get another bad ruling, and then we'll end up in the Supreme Court. I love this song. And hopefully we'll get a fair shake, and we'll win in the Supreme Court. Just like the ban, they sued us in the Ninth Circuit, and we lost, and then we lost in the appellate division, Sweetie. and then we won. Um, some say that you're just concocting this crisis to get the money for your wall. Well, I mean, it was a wall, and then it was a fence. What's it today? Some chicken wire and an ADT security decal? No. A couple of Doberman pinchers and a sprinkler? Thank you. You're fake news. Some say that you're just fear-mongering and using inflated statistics to help your own agenda. Not too many people have said this. Some say that you're full of <laughs> and others will agree That you're just fomenting fear and hate with your high Drugs and gangs and people, it's an invasion. Now push has come to shove. You shut down the gov just to try and get your way. I didn't need to do this. Your only interest is campaign promises. Can we believe a word you say? No. Girl, you're at an impasse. Now they're gonna sue your ass. But you just keep pushing me. You don't have a border, you don't have a country. Border lies. Breaking us out while you traumatize. All the stats you claim you've been shown. Back in your border lies. Border lies. Border lies. The rate for distracting from Russian ties. More insulting than your skin tone Talking about border lies Border lies Sir, you told us that Mexico would reimburse us for the wall. Is it true that you will allow them to pay entirely with 20% off coupons from Bed Bath & Beyond? Where the hell did that come from? I have my sources. My mom posted it on Facebook. Well, he's quick to rush to racist, rash decisions on a whim. I could do the wall over a longer period of time. I didn't need to do this. But the only national emergency we have is him. And by the way, Trump is crazy. He dupes and he deceives, but still his base believes the MAGA mantras he repeats. Make America great again. He said that Mexico would pay for it if so. I'd like to see your receipts. No. Girl. Hit that Adderall. Take a sniff and go get your border wall. And stop being such a team. We're getting it done. Border lies. Even Ann Poulter is getting wise. You're just walking like a Echoing border lies. Border lies. Let's just hope your face doesn't recognize. You're just dangling a carrot. Rest up in border lies. Border lies. Sorry. I got a little carried away. Uh, Let's not talk about it. Okay. It's too bad Mike Pence is in here. He loves Madonna. I don't know her. Welcome back. We are well in hour number two. Matt Connerton unleashed in the afternoon. We're live on WMNH 95.3 FM 
emanating from downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, streaming at WMNHradio.org on Channel 97 Comcast if you're in Manchester, and on Facebook via Facebook Live on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. <laughs> Carol Becker in the uh, Facebook Live chat said uh, something about had to go to the bathroom. Where did Matt go? I uh, also went to uh, use the restroom there, uh, Carol, if that is your real name. <clears throat> Uh, something about, you know, I, I mentioned, uh, R. Kelly and then, uh, we'll come back. We'll circle back in a minute to, uh, we have some, uh, breaking news possibly on the border wall, but, uh, you know, I was talking about, uh, I, I, Eric and I, I don't even remember the context of how it came up, but we were talking about R. Kelly and his, uh, recent interview. And I noticed something that I haven't, uh, seen anyone else point this out. Actually, I should Google this and just see. If anyone else has noticed this about, and I'm talking specifically, of course, about his uh, meltdown of an interview with Gail King, who uh, apparently is Oprah's best friend. I don't know if uh, you all knew that, but um, it's good to be friends with uh, with Oprah. Now, I'm Googling. I'm not going to tell you what it is that I'm Googling, but uh, yeah. Yeah, still looks like I'm the only one who noticed this. Okay, here, I'm going to play a little bit of this for you. I know some of you have probably heard it a thousand times. Some of you probably haven't heard it at all, but uh, we're going to go about uh, four minutes in to uh, to this. And I just want to point out something specific. It would never help anybody. R. Kelly, with all I've been through in my way, way past... To hold somebody, let alone four, five, six, fifty, you said. What, how stupid would I be to do that? I didn't say you were holding. That's stupid, guys. I didn't. Is this camera on me? <laughs> yes, it's on. That's stupid. Use your common sense. Don't forget the blogs. Forget how you feel about me. Hate me if you want to. Love me if you want. But just use your common sense. How stupid would it be for me to, with my crazy past and what I've been through? Oh, right now, I just think I need to be a mom. Okay, right here, I want you to listen very carefully. He kind of morphs into somebody else for a second. And I haven't heard anyone else point this out. Maybe I'm making too much of it in my own mind. Maybe I'm sort of exaggerating it in my own head and and reading into it. But just listen carefully, and then I'll tell you who he reminds me of right here. I stand hold girls against their will, chain them up in my basement, and, and don't let them eat and don't let them out unless they need some shoes down the street from their uncle. Right, right there. He kind of morphs into, can you guess? He kind of morphs into Bill Cosby for a second there, doesn't he? When he says, unless they need some shoes down the street from their uncle and then i told theo he has to go to school and vanessa wore the sweater and the children and the eat your pudding and i know that's a horrible bill cosby impression but r kelly right there i think does a fantastic uh, cosby doesn't he uh we have a call hi welcome to matt connerton unleashed who's this Ooh, I like it. All right. Hey, that got me moving. I don't, you know, I'm not much of a dancer, but that got me wiggling a little bit. Oh, right now, I just think I need to be a monster and hold girls against their will, chain them up in my basement, and, and don't let them eat and don't let them out unless they need some shoes down the street from their uncle. Right there. He's just totally Cosby's. Unless they need some shoes down the street. Again, I know I do a terrible Bill Cosby, but he does. R. Kelly does a great Bill Cosby. We we should just, you know, uh, you know, we, we can condemn him for everything else, but at least, well, actually, no, we shouldn't give him credit for that either, should we? Never mind. <laughs> now that I'm thinking it through. Uh, hello to uh, Peter White from The Morning Show. Uh, with Peter White, who joins us in the Facebook live chat. And, uh, Peter, I, I know why you're probably there. Uh, you may have heard that, uh, that in fact, Eric Gagnon has officially joined Matt Connerton Unleashed as the new entertainment reporter. <laughs> yes, Peter. I mean, you should have, what can I say, Pete? You know, you should have, uh, 
you should have you didn't give him a, an annual performance review. You didn't give him any raises, you know. And so now he's uh, what can I say? He's defective, uh, defective. He's defected uh, to this program. I have officially poached your entertainment reporter. I'm sorry, Pete, but it's the entertainment business. You know, you gotta you gotta play, gotta play hardball. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's see. Uh, Carol Becker says this song bangs. It sure does. I was, uh, uh, if you saw me on the Facebook live chat, I was, as I think the young people say now getting down. I think that's what they say. You know, I try to, as you know, I try to keep my, uh, my verbiage, my vernacular on the program, very young and hip and up to date so that, uh, you know, the, the youth will, uh, will tune into the show. Uh, I mean, I do the best I can. You know, I'm 72 years old, but I do the best I can, my friends. Uh, Perry says, uh, hello, Peter. Good to have you with us. Thank you, Perry. Yes, it is good to have Peter with us, although he's probably very upset with me for stealing away his entertainment reporter. But uh, Eric did agree to all of my terms. Uh, He did say, I mean, he said it. He sat in that chair. He said it right here. He's going to uh, he will uh, dedicate at least five or six minutes to uh to the art of french meme for every uh, a lot of people mispronounce it they say mime it's actually meme uh the art of french meme when he does his entertainment report which that by itself i said you sir are hired yes (laughs) and he will have a job for life unlike uh creamland which will probably be firing him in the next day or two so uh carol uh, becker says uh Greetings, uh, Peter. Yes. Peter White from The Morning Show getting some love. You can listen to The Morning Show, by the way, every weekday from 7 to 9 a.m. right here on WMNH. And if you miss uh, any part of that show, uh, it is archived, of course, at WMNHradio.org, as is this program. So, for example, if you missed the part where Eric uh, officially agreed to become the new entertainment reporter on Matt Connerton Unleashed, you can always play it back later. And and there it is. The audio does not lie, my friends. Um, so I saw this. Speaking of the border wall, and as always, uh, a, a word of appreciation to the great Randy Rainbow, who uh, one of my favorite YouTubers. That was his uh, song parody that I played. Uh, oh, uh, Ricky De Deodores, however you say that, says, I don't give you permission to use my music. Well, and he says it in all caps, so clearly he means it. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Hill.com reporting, Mike Pence, who is our uh, vice president, of course, uh, and GOP senators discuss offer to kill the Trump emergency disapproval resolution. Uh, as uh, as you know, uh, our president decided to use an emergency declaration to get this wall done. And uh, because he, you know, I mean, what he should do actually is declare that uh, can't he sign an executive order forcing Mexico to pay for it? Anyway, so uh, he did the emergency declaration. Uh, Congress uh, voted to uh, disapprove, disavow, disengage, dismantle, whatever. And uh, so we're in a bit of a stalemate there. Ricky says, yo, mama was a polar WLFF. How dare you, sir? I don't even know what WLL, WLFF means, but that's deeply offensive to me and to my Yeti heritage. Uh, says here, Vice President Pence is discussing an offer with Republican senators that could lead to the defeat of a Democratic resolution, while some Republicans did vote for it, too, overturning President Trump's emergency declaration to build a wall on the Mexican border, according to GOP sources briefed on the matter. Under the deal discussed between Pence and GOP senators, Trump would sign legislation reigning in his power to declare future national emergencies if they defeat the resolution of disapproval. Really? That is very interesting to me. That's an interesting twist, and I didn't see that coming. Let me read that part again. I want to make sure I'm understanding it correctly. Trump would, under this deal, Trump would sign legislation reigning in his power to declare future national emergencies. Uh, as long as he gets his way on this one. 
and they they kill this. Uh, they figure out a way to to kill this uh, resolution of disapproval. That's creative, in a, in a way. I I don't see this happening though. Uh, killing the resolution on the Republican-controlled Senate floor would spare the president a major embarrassment and avoid him having to issue the first veto of his presidency. But there is some skepticism among GOP senators whether Trump will actually go through with it. Yeah, and I'm pretty skeptical, too. I, I don't see this. And the plan is hurt by the fact that a bill to curb the president's power to declare national emergencies won't come to the Senate floor until after the March recess. Pence met today with a group of Republicans, including Senator Mike Lee, Republican of Utah, the sponsor of legislation to curb the president's national emergency declaration power, um, as well as Senators Tom Tillis, Republican of North Carolina. Well, these are all Republicans, obviously. Uh, Pat Toomey of uh, Pennsylvania, Rob Portman of Ohio, and Lamar Alexander of Tennessee. Every time I see or hear Lamar Alexander's name, I find myself thinking, he's still around. Wow. Uh, Lee's measure would require Congress to vote to extend a national emergency declaration after a period of 30 days. It is still undergoing some revisions, according to GOP senators. And that goes back to, I think there's currently, what is it, 31 national emergencies that have been declared in the past by previous presidents uh, that are still active. They don't sunset. They don't, uh, you know, they don't stop unless they're stopped. I think the number is 59 total that have been declared and and. Half of them are are still active, you know, whether they're uh, doing anything uh, or not. Uh, Oh, Carol Becker says, hello, pretty Ricky. Well, I think uh, I think uh, pretty Ricky there, as you call him, might. uh, I think he might uh, know uh, John Hopwood, who's uh, going on the date with you there. By the way, Ricky just posted a link. Maybe we'll uh, we'll come back to this. Oh, actually, it's just a meme. It says uh, 44% of white evangelicals claim Trump has strong moral character. Well, of course he he of course he does. He didn't mean to uh hook up with uh an adult film actress or a Playboy playmate. The devil made him do it and he recognizes that which uh, makes him uh, actually he's never even admitted to any of it, so never mind. Uh Senate Republicans familiar with the offer say there would be there would have to be an ironclad promise from Trump to sign Lee's bill in order to flip Republicans who currently say they will vote no. So far, Trump himself hasn't made any such pledge, leaving the process in limbo. Pence made no commitment, according to a White House official familiar with the meeting, and only said he would relay the possible deal to President Trump. The vice president said he would be, quote, happy to bring their concerns to the president, but made zero commitments, unquote, according to the White House official. Uh, The official also noted that Tillis requested the meeting and Pence was happy to attend. The vice president, quote, encouraged the senators to vote against a disapproval resolution and indicated a vote for it would be a vote against securing our borders, unquote. A lunchtime meeting of the Senate Republican Conference on Tuesday today failed to settle the internal debate over the emergency declaration and the resolution of disapproval. Said one GOP senator, quote, it was our usual circular conversation. Everyone goes around and throws out proposals and nothing gets resolved. There is no plan, unquote. Uh, already two of the no votes, uh, Senator uh, Susan Collins from Maine and Rand Paul from Kentucky say they won't change their minds. Lisa Murkowski of Alaska doesn't seem inclined to reverse herself either. Uh, and this kind of goes on. But we won't go through the whole thing because it's a lot of speculation uh, about where this ends up. And, you know, of course, uh, speculating recklessly and irresponsibly about such things is one of life's great joys and uh, one of the things I take uh, tremendous delight in on the program. Uh, let's see. There's all kinds of... Uh, oh, nice meme, says Carol Becker. <laughs> okay, and now Ricky is uh, taunting me with these pictures of wolves. Uh, again, uh, making a specious uh, commentary on my Yeti heritage, which I'm very proud of. Let's see. Uh, let's get to some other stuff, shall we? We have about 30 minutes left in today's show. Uh, for anyone who'd like to give us a call, 603-250-6007 is the number. 
250-6007. And um, I'll just remind you, too, tomorrow on the program, right at the top of the show, we'll be joined by Dr. Red Lawhern, uh, who will be calling in. The last time he was on, uh, boy, did we get an incredible response from that. A ton of positive feedback. Uh, I think it's the most downloaded episode of the show ever. And we had a lot of Facebook Live activity for that show. Uh, Something uh, not necessarily newsworthy in the grand scheme of things, but I just think it's kind of interesting that uh, this is happening at all. Uh, Politico has a story up posted today, Hillary Clinton to headline a DNC fundraiser. Hillary Clinton will raise money for the Democratic National Committee at an intimate dinner fundraiser in Washington later this month, according to an invitation attended by Politico. Uh, Obtained, rather, by Politico. The event scheduled for March 27th is billed as dinner and conversation with Clinton and DNC Chairman Tom Perez and comes as the DNC ramps up for the 2020 presidential race. Between 20 and 30 people are expected to attend, according to a person familiar with the event. And then it goes on into some more details about it. The, the, The thing that's just interesting to me and a little bit surprising in a way is I kind of didn't think that that type of thing would be happening because I thought that the idea probably would be let's kind of leave Hillary in the rearview mirror for the Democrats because, you know, she, uh, I I think by uh, many standards, she uh, turned out to be a fairly uh, poor candidate in 2016. She couldn't even beat, of all people, Donald Trump, right? So I just, uh, I don't know. I'm a little bit surprised. But uh, but I but I guess she's uh, she's going to be doing the fundraisers. I mean, it's it, to me, it could go either way. Either she could be kind of a drag on everything because people do want to leave her in the past. And, you know, I've heard a lot of Democrats say, you know, they kind of wish she would just sort of uh, fade off into the sunset and kind of wish that she had done so uh, already. But if since she hasn't done so already, maybe now would be a good time. As things start to ramp up and we can just kind of leave her behind, right? But uh, but maybe not, you know. I mean, I'm sure she's still also very popular with some circles within the Democratic Party. So, you know, maybe she is useful to have around. Uh, we should talk about Tucker Carlson a little bit because Tucker Carlson, uh, some comments were unearthed that he had made uh, over a decade ago, to be fair, um, and he is not apologizing for them. He said some sort of, uh, I saw one article describe them as kind of a shock jock, uh, type of comments. And, you know, th- they were comments that were made a long time ago, to be fair. And I'm always a little bit leery of holding people to a standard today over something that was said Uh, A long time ago Um, doesn't make what was said a long time ago. If it was something that would be offensive by today's standards, it doesn't make it okay. That's not some people take that wrong. They think, you know, when I say something like that, that I'm justifying something that someone said that was terrible. But um, I do think it's worth considering. Um, Times have changed. Things are much more politically correct now. Um, I I do get uh, particularly nervous about um holding people to certain standards of conduct when it comes to humor you know somebody made a i mean we've seen plenty of examples of this where someone makes a joke who was the the director there was a director who somebody had found a joke that he had made on twitter like years and years ago and it lost him a a movie uh, a, a big movie he was supposed to direct was it the avengers like the the director for the Avengers movies, it was like the next Avengers movie he was supposed to come back and direct again, the new one, and then he got fired from that because of this really old tweet. And it's like, at a certain point, it does start to feel, I almost hate to use the term witch hunt, because today we hear the term witch hunt applied to something else. But, um, you know, there does need to be some sort of reasonable limits on... You know, if somebody did something a long time ago that we find out about today, are we to assume that they're now a horrible person because of something that they said a long time ago that they probably wouldn't say today in today's world, in today's climate, in the context of what is happening today in society? Now, 
Having said that, there may also be a little bit of my own bias coming into this as I tend to not judge Tucker Carlson as harshly as some others would only because, look, I'm very conflicted about the guy. For one thing, I'm still bitter that he doesn't wear the bow tie anymore. He used to wear a bow tie, and then uh, a number of years ago he stopped and went with a more conventional look, and I really like the bow tie. I'm kidding. I'm completely indifferent about the bow tie. Couldn't care less about it one way or the other, but he did used to wear a bow tie, as some of you might recall. Uh, He gave that up. He kind of looked like a young Orville Redenbacher. You know, it would always make me crave popcorn when I'd see him on television, like on Hardball or whatever. But here's the thing about Tucker Carlson. So I tend to be deeply conflicted about him. On the one hand, whenever he talks about immigration, to me, he winds up sounding, I don't even want to say xenophobic. I I go with him. I go straight to racist. He sounds downright racist when when he talks about the subject of immigration. So I get very upset with him on that issue. However, uh, on the favorable side, for a Republican, uh, for a Republican on Fox News with that audience, he is very anti-war. And one of the greatest things is it's still, (laughs) Ricky says, you're a racist. One of the greatest things I've seen on cable news ever was Tucker Carlson's epic takedown. If you haven't seen it, you should see it. Not right now. Stick with me, but later. You can find it on YouTube. Just type in Tucker Carlson, John Bolton. Tucker Carlson's epic takedown of John Bolton. It was before Bolton went to work for the Trump administration. Actually, right before. And there was a rumor that part of why, because there's a story that John Bolton apparently was very angry after the show at Tucker Carlson because he thought... It's Fox. It's Safe Harbor. I can go on there. I can spout my neoconservative pro-war, let's get out there and bomb everybody rhetoric, and the host is going to eat it up because the audience is going to eat it up. Everybody's going to eat it up. And instead, what he walked into was a rhetorical buzzsaw because Tucker Carlson, very smartly, very precisely, just took him apart. I mean, really, it was he bodied him, to use a, uh, a term in the modern vernacular. Uh, Tucker bodied uh, John Bolton and his very, uh, his very evil mustache as well. You know, the mustache, of course, is uh, Steve, uh, I believe is his name. You know, and you know my theory. I, I think that Steve is, uh, the mustache is secretly controlling all of John Bolton's uh, actions and deeds. But I, it was epic. And there's... No, if you feel about that issue the way that I do, there's no way to watch that and not feel something positive toward Tucker Carlson. I mean, it it was it was really, really good. So for that reason, uh, you know, I have a soft spot for the guy and not just in that instance, but other instances, too, where he's had on guests who are very pro war and Tucker Carlson is very anti war. So. There's a part of me that wants to like the guy, although because of how I feel about the immigration issue, it is very difficult to. Uh, Ed Murphy's in the Facebook live chat. Uh, He says, did you hear the comment of the mayor of Lewiston, Maine? Yes, I did. We'll get to that. And if so, did you find even the slightest bit of humor in it? No, I was, uh, I mean... The only thing even remotely funny, we'll we'll come back to that. The only thing even remotely funny about that is that there's that there are politicians that are so unself-aware they they can't process that the terrible things they say might have actual consequences for their careers. Um, I always think of uh, George Allen back in 2006, Senator George Allen, who Sean Hannity had inf- infamously uh, said was going to be the next uh, Ronald Reagan, and then George Allen made his macaca comment, completely oblivious to how that could possibly backfire on him, and that was the end. Of George Allen's political career, I always uh, think uh, think back to that. But uh, so here's um, this is from the Hill dot com. Fox News host Tucker Carlson uh, yesterday rejected what he called a culture of outrage from both Democrats and Republicans amid the fallout from recently resurfaced offensive comments he made about women and minorities years ago. Um. Car, uh, Carlson delivered a roughly seven-minute opening monologue on Tucker Carlson tonight, peppered with graphics 
that read The Mob, Crackdown on Dissent, and Liberal Hypocrisy. While he did not reference any of his specific controversial comments, he doubled down on his initial refusal to apologize for them. Uh, He said, quote, Fox News is behind us, as they have been since the very first day. Toughness is a rare quality in a TV network, and we're grateful for that. Uh, We've always apologized when we're wrong, and we'll continue to do that. That's what decent people do. They apologize, but we will never bow to the mob ever, no matter what. Um, By the way, Janine Pirro also uh, has not apologized, but with her. Now, Janine Pirro, of course, Judge Janine, as she's known, you know, she made the observation that she— uh, well, she was questioning uh, Ilan Omar's uh, allegiance to the United States, questioning her patriotism, her love of country, because she wears a hijab. I don't know if I'm even saying that correctly. Um, and uh, uh, Pirro was saying, well, she wears that, so that means her real, you know, is her uh, real allegiance to Sharia law, not the United States Constitution. Um, in that instance, however, Fox News actually disavowed her comments. Apparently they have a Muslim producer who works there who even took to Twitter and said, hey, could you not do that? Uh, That's kind of offensive. Um, Now she has, uh, Janine Pirro, to my knowledge, has received no actual consequence of that. But um, other than, you know, rebuked by her own network, but she hasn't been suspended. Uh, She's certainly not going to be fired or anything. But she also... uh, she has not apologized, much like Tucker Carlson. She also refuses to apologize. But but the big difference here is, in her case, the network did rebuke her, whereas in Tucker Carlson's case, they're standing behind him. All right, Carlson made a series of indirect references to the backlash his comments generated after the first batch was resurfaced Sunday by the left-leaning Media Matters. The Fox News host described the cycle of the, quote, great American outrage machine, unquote, in which he said one comes under questioning from reporters, is forced to apologize and still faces criticism. Carlson asked, quote, but what if we stopped pretending for a minute? What if we acknowledged what's actually going on, unquote? Carlson described Democrats as deadly serious in their effort to crush those who oppose their ideology. Carlson said, quote, Why are the people who considered Bill Clinton a hero lecturing me about sexism? How can the party that Democrats, uh, that demands rather racial quotas, denounce other people as racist? After a while, you begin to think maybe their criticisms aren't sincere. Uh, What's happening is how reliably the other side pretends that none of this is happening. Republicans in Washington uh, do a fairly credible imitation of an opposition party, but on the deepest level— it's all a pose. Now, there's more. Let me start there. Now, let's apply a little bit of, of nuance here and, and kind of divide this up a little bit. Whatever you think about his comments, which, again, were—I um, don't think this article even includes his comments, and they're not worth repeating— But they were very sort of—I think Media Matters is, is who described them as very sort of shock jock, the kind of thing you might— you might have heard on on Howard Stern back in the late 90s. And if it's humor, I'm not, you know, it's very difficult to offend me with humor um, if someone's trying to be funny. But, you know, Tucker Carlson is not a shock jock, never was. He's a, you know, a quote unquote respected journalist. But regardless of what you might think about his comments, and how reprehensible they may be. That doesn't mean that what he's saying is completely wrong. In that, he points out, and I'll even give him a little bit of credit here, he says both Democrats and Republicans are guilty of this, that there is, um, this is all, this has all been weaponized. Not just in this instance, of course. It happens all the time. You know, I talk about it a lot on this show, how in this politically correct era in which we live, there has been this weaponization of political correctness where people are taken down by those who politically oppose them. Very often by things that were either said in jest as some very poor humor, um... Or or someone who thought they were being funny but were really just being blatantly racist like that mayor that Ed brought up in uh, in Maine 
who who had to resign and good riddance. He's just a, that you know that mayor is just a creep. But but it is I, I mean Tucker Carlson's not wrong when he said this has been weaponized or actually that's my term he didn't say weaponized but but both sides do it right and he points out the hypocrisy when he says. Why are the people who consider to Bill Clinton a hero lecturing me about sexism? Well, that's a fair point. And partisanship trumps everything, ultimately, right? You know, so people are mad at people on the other side. Both Republicans and Democrats are guilty of this. And, and I, you know, I can't play that game with a clear conscience. It's one of the reasons I'm an independent. Because both Democrats and Republicans, they, they look for things— and I'm not saying that Tucker Carlson doesn't deserve criticism for what he's for his comments, by the way. So when I say they look for things, I'm not suggesting that everything that they find in the course of looking for things is is not valid and, and not to be criticized. That's not what I'm saying at all. Just to be clear. You might find things in the course of looking for things that one should have to answer for and be held accountable for. OK, so just to be clear. So um, without making a judgment about what Tucker Carlson said, I'm just saying, putting that off to the side, if we're being real about it, both Democrats and Republicans do go out of their way to find things, sometimes to twist things, sometimes to take things out of context and weaponize them to score political points. And in this politically correct era that we live in, that's very easy to do. And just to be clear, though, for for anyone who's new to the show, and if you're a longtime listener, you've heard me talk about this, maybe more often than you'd like. But I'm not making the argument because You'll often hear conservatives argue against political correctness and they'll they'll talk about it like, well, there's no need for political correctness because, you know, it's like this whole attitude that, well, if you just don't pay any attention, it all goes away anyway. If you don't pay any attention to racism, it goes away. If you don't pay any attention to sexism, it just goes away. So just pay it no mind. And there is no such thing as racism anymore. There is no such thing as sexism. There is no such thing as homophobia anymore. That's all been settled. So don't worry about it. Just stop talking about it and it goes away. That's not my position at all, just to be clear. Because I actually think political correctness at its core is a good thing, and it means well. In other words, political correctness, the idea that you shouldn't say things that are racist, you shouldn't say things that are homophobic, you shouldn't say things that are anti-Semitic, you shouldn't say things that are transphobic, you shouldn't say things that are Islamophobic, you shouldn't say things that are sexist. Did I get that one already? I can't remember. Right? In other words, don't be a jerk. (laughs) Pretty simply, right? That's a good thing. The idea that you shouldn't say things that uh, work to marginalize people and reinforce bigotry and, and prejudice and hate and all that. No, political correctness at its core, I think, is well meaning. The problem is, like anything that's good, like anything that means well, It can be used for nefarious purposes, and that's what happens in politics all the time. So regardless of what you think of Tucker Carlson's comments, I'm not telling you they're not bad. I'm not telling you they're they're not reprehensible. I think he should just apologize if he if he because he could he could even kind of spin it or maybe even say this and be sincere about it. If he said, hey, uh. I said those things then. I wouldn't say those things now. The person I am today would not say those things. I said those things in jest. And by the way, I read what he said, and I don't think, I I mean, I, I certainly don't think any of them were meant as serious comments. But if he said, you know, I said those things in jest or in a different context, and, and, you know, and I'm sorry if, if, uh, if that's hurtful to anybody, I think people would accept that. I think that would be a good way out, right? But maybe he's hanging, maybe, you know, maybe he's taking a page out of Trump's playbook and just just saying, hey, you know what? Don't apologize for anything ever. You know, just keep going. 
Oh, Ed Murphy says, hey, a comment without a link, good man? Oh. I, oh, he's uh, talking to uh, Ricky. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so... Says here, Media Matters released audio Sunday featuring many of Carlson's appearances on a popular shock jock radio radio program hosted by Tom Clem or Todd Clem rather. Todd Clem. See, I don't even know who that is. Who's Todd Clem? <laughs> I've never even heard of the guy. But apparently he had a popular shock jock radio program. Carlson makes a number of derogatory comments about women. He also makes multiple observations about issues related to sexual abuse. Media Matters released additional resurfaced comments as Carlson's show aired that featured the Fox News host making incendiary remarks years ago, including saying that, quote, Iraq is a crappy place filled with a bunch of, you know, semi-illiterate primitive monkeys. That's why it wasn't worth invading, unquote. Yikes. Um... See, there's that part of me that goes, well, he, you know, this was said on a quote-unquote shock jock radio show. And there's this other part of me goes, well, that's not funny, and it's that's really blatantly racist. There's no way to argue that that's not racist. <laughs> that's, yikes. Uh, in the remarks released Monday evening, Carlson denounced whining from black politicians who are, he said, using racism as a defense. Carlson said... This is another comment that he made, I guess, on that show in August of 2008. The Congressional Black Caucus exists to blame the white man for everything. And I'm happy to say that in politics, I'm happy to say that in public, rather, because it's true. Uh, Carlson had uh, sparked controversy in the past with his comments about immigration and other subjects. He used the latest controversy to pivot toward his show, encouraging, quote, anyone who disagrees with my views to come on the program and explain why. Uh, there's really not that much you need to do to respond, unquote, he said on Monday's show. Quote, it's pointless to try to explain how the words were spoken in jest or taken out of context or in any case bear no resemblance to what you actually think or would want for the country. None of that matters. Nobody cares. You know the role you're required to play. You are a sinner begging the forgiveness of Twitter. Well, again... If you remove what he said from that last part of what he's saying now, he's not entirely wrong when he says it's pointless to try to explain how the words were spoken in jest or taken out of context. Da, 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 da. Nobody cares. You know the role you're required to play. You are a sinner begging the forgiveness of Twitter. That's true. That is what happens when you're called out. And it doesn't matter. He's right. It doesn't matter if, if it was a joke. It doesn't matter if it was in jest and it has no resemblance to how you actually feel. You're required to grovel and apologize. He's right about that. Again, regardless of how you might feel about his comments, and that comment about Iraq is pretty racist, even on what's supposed to be uh, – what well, I've never heard of the guy, Todd, Todd Clem, but apparently he had a funny show. Even in that context, I mean, that's just blatantly racist. But if you separate that out, he's right, um, you know, about the role he's required to play now in this game of gotcha where something was unearthed that he had said. So – uh, we are not going to get, well, maybe we can do it quickly. We're almost out of time. Very, very quickly. This, uh, guy from Maine, uh, this, this won't take long that, uh, Ed had brought up, uh, CBS news reporting a Maine mayor resigns after his racist text message leaks. Uh, the mayor of Maine's second largest city has resigned in the wake of a controversy over his leaked text messages, one of which included a racist remark. Republican Shane Bouchard stepped down as Lewison's mayor effective immediately on uh, Friday. 
Uh, text messages made public by a woman who said she had an affair with Bouchard when he was a mayoral candidate revealed a remark in which he describes elderly black people as antique farm equipment. Heather Barub is a Barub or Baruby Everly uh, said the two had an affair and that uh, and that she was the source of emails the main GOP used to attack Democratic opponent opponent uh, Ben Bouchard. I'm sorry, Ben Shin. Bouchard admitted making mistakes, but he also decried media reporting on rumors. Bouchard said, quote, in this political climate where the media does not discriminate between facts and rumors, it is hard to be a public figure. I'm not a perfect person. I've made many mistakes in my past. I've also in the past been the victim of some very damaging rumors, unquote. The state attorney general's office confirmed Friday that it's assisting a Lewiston Police Department investigation into the matter. Well, he didn't... uh, he didn't bother to deny that he made the uh, the remarks. Um, this article here doesn't include the actual verbiage that was used, but anyway, uh, again, it's it's always amazing to me. Just you know, <laughs> these politicians that you know, it, it's bad enough to say something racist, and then on top of that, just the lack of intellect of a person who does that and apparently it never even enters their mind why that's probably a terrible mistake all right we got to go we're out of time thank you everybody don't forget tomorrow at the top of the show i'll be joined by dr red lawhern really looking forward to that thank you uh john hopwood for stopping in earlier and of course eric gagnon the new entertainment reporter here Uh, it's official right here on matt connerton unleashed Sorry, Peter. I poached him. He he said it. He agreed to he agreed to my terms. What can I tell you? Anyway, all right, we're out of here. If you missed any part of today's show, it will be up in just a little bit at WMNHradio.org. I'm out. Talk at y'all a little bit later. IPMNation.com